We all know how much women have gone through since the beginning of time. From suspicious wife tales to burning witches and depriving women of their rights. But you should sit back because what we're about to tell you will leave you in total disbelief. The medieval times are famous for their inhuman punishments, weird customary rules and medical treatments. Who hasn't heard about little kids being given a certain type of syrup that would count for an illegal drug today? Well, unfortunately, the information we have gathered for you today doesn't even come close to any of this. Welcome to our channel, History Unfolded. In today's video, we're taking a trip down memory lane to enlighten you that women have always been exceptional at inventions. The media has shown us glimpses of old age, like royals bathing in blood to have better skin or making sacrifices to their gods for something magical to happen. Sure, all the arsenic and lead from centuries old makeup products were harmful, but back then it did the trick. All the pictorial evidence we see of women from even a few decades ago are all glowing and living their best lives. It all started 6,000 years ago, and we kid you not, men and women both started the trend of wearing eyeliner. Everyone knows about Cleopatra and her legendary killer eye makeup, but these beauty products first appeared in ancient Egypt. It was not only Queen Cleopatra who inspired so many blockbuster movies, but all the Egyptians. People would use plants, mercury, and dyes to create blush on and lipstick. Although everything was made out of lead and arsenic, but it all indeed made the queen's beauty famous among the world. Obviously, no one today will go near such toxic materials. But what if there's a product made for women that's not full of lead and arsenic? Should it still be allowed? Well, women face some of the issues we still do to this age. Being on birth control not only messes with your moods and skin, but has many health side effects. However, even men from the 1800s had issues with wearing condoms. We have all heard that before, right? Back in the 1800s, condoms were used as a way of birth control and made from the intestines of animals. So, I guess it's fair that men didn't want to wear the body parts of a sheep or a goat. Plus, the world wasn't as open-minded back then. If condoms were to be found anywhere in public, people would start associating it with house of prostitutes. As usual, women had to step up and experiment for themselves. The earliest evidence of birth control for women comes from Mesopotamia and ancient Egypt. In 1850 BC, women were using all kinds of dangerous and unknown herbal leaves and links to avoid pregnancies. For those who are even more interested, maybe you can check out the papyrus scrolls that show all the directions on how to use these methods. So as the time moved on, so did the methods. Did you know all these crazy methods for birth control led to the complete extinction of a plant? One of the most famously used methods of birth control originated in North Africa. It was a plant called Selphium and was only found in some regions of North Africa. But during all the migrations, empires falling down and wild explorations, the plant made its way to Romania and Greece. But most of these people only knew the efficacy of Selphium plant. They had no idea that it could be grown in a certain area. That area is known as Libya as of now. And there's still no sight of this extinct birth control method. So when the Greeks didn't have anything else to count on, people went on a search for the rare plant. But they succeeded in a way. A close cousin of the extinct Selphium was discovered and started being used again. Knowing that all this was back in the 1800s, would you believe that this method is still used in some parts of India? Anyways, due to the lack of modern medical inventions and knowledge, millions of women lost their lives during childbirth or trying these random birth control methods. The Catholic Church also played a huge part in campaigning against birth control as they considered it wrong and immoral. Women had to rely on the pull-out method to seek some quack to help them with unwanted babies. That's not all. Women would mix up concoction containing poisonous herbs, copper, or anything toxic enough to have a miscarriage. The church members would simply cast out these women and label them witches for even trying to mess with nature's way. Wow, it sure does seem like everyone gets labeled as a witch nowadays. Anyways, let's go back to the story. After the Catholic Church stepped into the matter, 
In the 1800s, the US had the largest number of birth rate. Every woman during the 1800s had given birth to at least eight children. Well, have you do the math. But thankfully, when the 1840s came, things began to change. As the political parties began to advise in favor of family planning, however, there was still no magical birth control pill in sight. Women were using all kinds of vaginal insertions to take care of stuff. The most peculiar thing that stood out from all these unconventional methods has to be cow dung. Yep, you heard that right. With men on one hand refusing to wear animal intestines, there were old wise tales going around. We all know how in moments of desperation we can resort to anything. So many women would insert cow dung inside themselves and hope for a miscarriage. Some would use it as an alternative method for condoms. Now, you tell us, is it better to wear cow intestines or cover yourself in its fecal matter? We would love to know your thoughts on this one. We know it took us decades to invent any sort of harmless contraceptives. But throughout the entire 1800s and 1900s, the government kept banning any sale of birth control. By 1888, abortion became illegal as well. The United States has outlawed all sorts of contraceptives. So how did we end up with the magical pill? In the 1950s, the mysterious island of Puerto Rico was one of the only areas left with no laws on birth control. The area was grossly populated and people would resort in total sterilization to prevent any more childbirth. Here is the exciting part. For reasons still unknown, the island was chosen to test the birth control pill. Since the states allowed no room for any clinical trial, as it was against the law, a group of researchers and inventors came together. You could say they were the Avengers of the birth control invention. The team included a scientist named Margaret Sanger, and a biologist named Gregory Pincus, and even a Catholic physician known as John Rock. Now, these people all had an agenda, and no matter what side of history you're on, we can agree that their backgrounds were none other than pure racism. All these researchers simply wanted to work on birth control so they could eliminate diseases and mentally ill people. But before this, the team met one another for a family planning project that was being supported by huge world powers. However, the project targeted low-income African women. Because this unacceptable project aimed to eliminate an entire race. But the project of inventing the first hormonal birth control wasn't just a walk on the park. All the scientists needed resources, equipment, and funding for the clinical trials. This explains why they specifically targeted Puerto Rican women, because they were poor and illiterate. Without even knowing what they were signing up for, these women were blindly subjected to clinical trials. Most of them already had kids and didn't mind any experimentations. There were false promises and advantages taken of a nation, but people didn't have a choice. The team offered free medical checkups to women who participated and they were more than happy to become lab rats. However, as we tell you this part of the story, did it cross your mind how they got the money for all this? Surely it would have been expensive for foreigners to travel back and forth and come up with the equipment. This is when a billionaire heiress comes into the play, known famously as Catherine McCormick. If you haven't been around long enough, you must have heard of the McCormick family. There are all kinds of reasons behind their popularity, but this video only concerns Catherine McCormick. She was a philanthropist and suffragette and the heir to a huge fortune. She funded the entire project that we talked about as she wanted to play her part in history. Even after her death, she donated $5 million to the Planned Parenthood project. Now, if you're interested in all the controversy surrounding the McCormick name, you'll have to wait for another video. Now, a totally funded project with the aim to help women across the world carried on. During the early 50s, the pill faced many hiccups and the side effects began to show. We have reached the end of the story, but there's more. By the 1950s, the team wanted to celebrate their success and commercialize their big invention. But many patients left the clinical trials because the side effects were just too much. The doctors didn't pay any heed because they simply thought that the women were either imagining or exaggerating them. The team had been working for a long time, 
and both the States, the UK and Europe had been waiting for the good news. But after the side effects, things slowed down and many more trials were performed. Three women unfortunately lost their lives during the trial, but no doctor thought to perform an autopsy. Finally, after years of hard work, the birth control pill was made available to the public in 1964. The US finally lifted all the ban on contraceptives for married couples. By the 1970s, unmarried couples could finally have access to the pill as well. This video simply does not do justice to all the researchers and women who put their lives at risk and changed the entire world with this invention. Could you believe using some leaves to avoid pregnancy in today's age? Or perhaps you would prefer the option of drinking arsenic to get the wanted results. Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching.